we're doing question number three of the worksheet on uh, motion on threaded rings, forces on threaded rings. Okay. On each of a light inextensible, one end of a light inextensible string is attached to a fixed point A of a fixed vertical wire. The other end of the string is attached to a small ring B of mass 0 0.2 kgs. Okay. So, if this ring B has a mass of 0 0.2 kgs, then that means there's going to be a downward weight, which is going to be mg, that is weight into mass into 10. So, that's going to be 2 newtons in this direction. Through which the wire passes, a horizontal force of magnitude 5 newton is applied to the midpoint of M of the string. The system is in equilibrium and the string is taut. That means it's completely stretched with B below A and the angle ABM and BAM equals 30 degrees. Now, if you remember from our first discussion on this topic, we had discussed that if you're getting an isosceles triangle, that means that the tension in the string is going to be the same in both directions. So if this is T1, this is also T1. The value of the tension is going to stay the same if it's forming an isosceles triangle. Okay. Or if it says that the ring is smooth. Okay. Uh, the system is in equilibrium with the string taut with B below A and angle ABM and BAM equal to 30 degree. Show that the tension in BM is 5 newtons. Okay, so you have to find this tension in the string BM. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll use this point M to resolve the forces. Okay. So if we're speaking from the reference of M, then one of the tensions should be pass, uh, facing away from M and the other tension should also be pointing away from M because tension always points away from uh, the point. Okay, now we need to resolve both these tensions. So one would be in, if look at the upper T. So for this, one of the forces would be in this direction, one of the components, and the other component would be in this direction. The one opposite to theta is the sine component always. So that this is going to be, uh, T sine 30 and the vertical component I'm drawing here instead from the same point instead of drawing it here that's going to be T cos 30 similarly for this T there's a component in this direction and there's a component in this direction. But the vertical one, I'll be drawing here instead. Okay, so the horizontal component is again the opposite component, which is going to be the sine component. So T sine 30. And the vertical component, the downward component is going to be the adjacent component, which is the cos component. So T cos 30. Now we have to show that the tension in BM, which is just T, is equals to 5. So what we can do is equate this force to both of these forces. So for part 1, we're going to write T sine 30 plus T sine 30. We have to show that the tension comes out to be 5. Okay, so this should be equals to 5. So 
टू टी साइन थर्टी शुड बी इक्वल्स टू फाइव ओके बिकॉज द लेफ्ट फोर्स इज टी साइन थर्टी एंड टी साइन थर्टी शुड एड अप टू गिव अस फाइव सो डिवाइड दिस टी इज इक्वल्स टू फाइव ओवर टू साइन थर्टी that should be equals to 5 to show that the tension is 5 yes that comes out to be 5 so hence shown that the tension in string bm is equals to 5 had they asked for tension in string am you would get 5 as well because since it's forming an isosceles triangle tension on both parts of the string is going to be the same this is 5 over 2 sin 30 okay part 1 is done if you have any questions please ask A part two, which says the ring is on the point of sliding up the wire. Okay, let me draw the string string separately. Here's the ring. It's about to move upwards. Okay, find the coefficient of friction between the ring and the wire. Okay, so if it's about to move upwards. that means mu r is in the opposite direction also we had the weight in the same direction two newtons okay also r is going to be perpendicular to the contact and since the ring is being pulled in this direction the contact is going to be here on the left side of the ring that means r is going to be here that's the normal contact force perpendicular to the contact then there is going to be uh, the vertical and horizontal component of this uh, tension tension is 5 in this part of the string this time it's going to be pointing away from the ring so this is t which is in fact 5 newtons now resolve it into its components it's you can use 30 and use this triangle then this points towards the right this points to upwards or you may use 60 here and then use this upward component and this right component it's up to you i'm going to stick to 30 so then this component i will be plotting here instead and that was the opposite component to the 30 degree so it's going to be t sin 30 or 5 sin 30 similarly upwards it's going to be t which is 5 cos 30 the ring is on the point of sliding up the wire so that means it it's not sliding up the wires it's at the verge of sliding up the wire so for now there's no acceleration so forward force which is going to be this equals to the backward force which is 2 plus mu r so for part 2 it's going to be upward force which is 5 cos 30 equals to the downward force says which is which are 2 and mu r now notice that r is pointing towards the left and 5 sin 30 is pointing towards the right meaning r is equals to 5 sin 30 
So now you should be able to find mu 5 cos 30 plus 2 plus mu 5 sin 30. So then mu comes out to be 5 cos 30 minus 2 upon 5 sin 30, which comes out to be 0 0.932 0 0.932050 0 and then round it off to three significant figures 0 0.932 okay so we found the coefficient of friction between the ring and the wire Then it says that a particle of m kg is attached to the ring. Okay. So, next part. Now, there is an m kg mass further attached to the ring. So, now the downward force on the ring is going to be 2 plus 10m. So it's going to be 2 plus 10 m kgs, sorry, newtons in the downward direction because now there's an extra mass attached to the ring. Okay. The ring is now on the point of sliding down the wire. So now it's going to be moving downwards. That means now the friction is going to be upwards against the motions. So we have mu r here. Uh, given that the coefficient of friction between the ring and the wire is unchanged, find the value of m. Okay, so now uh, write down the other forces. Again, this is the contact. So this is going to be R. And we already have the vertical and horizontal component for tension. This is 5 sine 30 like before. And upward is 5 cos 30, like before. This is 5 cos 30. I think that's all of the forces. So, again, downward force, which is this should be equals to the two upward forces. So, two plus 10 M, which is the downward force equals to mu R plus five cos 30. Now again, R is the force at the left which is balanced by the force on the right, 5 sine 30, that means they're equal. So, 2 plus 10m equals mu, we had found earlier, 0 0.932050 times r is 5 sine 30. Plus 5, cos 30. Now rearrange this and make m the subject. So I'm writing 10 equals subtract 2 from this and then divide 10 from the answer. 0 0.932 into 5 sine 30 plus 5 cos 30 minus 2 divided by 10. This should give you the mass. Let's see what do we get 0.932050 into 5 sine 30 
plus five zero six zero point six so I give the answer zero point four six six ha zero point four six six okay zero point four six is the mass That was question number three. Question number four. If there is a question, hai, please tell me. No, no. Okay. Question four. Now, look, before we start, again, this is an isosceles triangle. If it's an isosceles triangle, that means tension in both parts of the string is going to be the same. If there's a good pointing away, where saying this is T, then this would also be T. Okay. Secondly, even if this was not an isosceles triangle, it's a good 40 ota. So, if we say this should be T1 and this should be T2 because it's not an isosceles triangle. However, since there's a ring given over here and they're saying that the ring is smooth. If that happens, then also the tension in both parts of the string is same. So either the ring should be smooth, and if it's not smooth, then the, the triangle should be isosceles. Okay, so in this case, since it's both actually, so there's going to be T in this direction, there's going to be T in this direction. Tension is going to be the same. A small smooth ring R of mass 0 0.6 kg. So if mass is 0 0.6 kg, then this is going to be 0 0.6 into 10 newtons, the weight, which is 6 newtons. Okay. Is threaded it on a light inextensible string of length 100 centimeters. So collectively, the length of the string is 100. 50 plus 50. Okay. On each of the string is attached, one end of the string is attached to a fixed point A. A small bead B of mass 0 0.4 kg is attached to the other end of the string. So this has a downward force of 4 newtons, which is the weight of B. And is threaded on a fixed rough horizontal rod. So if it's rough, that means when this would be pulled in this direction because the string is towards its left, then there's going to be an opposite mu r or frictional force. Okay. And r is actually the normal contact force, which in this case is the vertically upward force. The system is in equilibrium with B at a distance of 80 centimeters from A. Find the tension in the strings. Okay. In the first part, you have to find the tension in the string. So for that, uh, we will be using, we, we need the angles first. So we have three sides of the triangle. So you can find this angle here from using this right angle triangle. Since it's isosceles, what you can do is you can say this is 40 and the other part is 40 as well, only because it's isosceles. So the vertical line uh, breaks the base into two equal parts. Okay, so we can now use 
sine theta to find this angle. So sine theta equals 40 over 50, which is equals to 4 over 5. No need to find theta because we will be using sine theta throughout. No need of theta. So if this that's your theta, then sine theta is 4 by 5. Then what's going to be cos theta? Because we need cos theta component as well. You can apply Pythagoras theorem here to find this length. And it's going to be square root. Okay, let me do it here. Square root 50 square minus 40 square, which is going to be 30. So this length is going to be 30. Okay. So cos theta is equals to 40, uh, 40 over 30. So something nine. No. Cos theta is going to be 30 over 50 because that's the theta and adjacent is 30 over 50. So 3 by 5. So what some students would do, they would find this theta instead. So then their opposite would be 30 and their adjacent would be 40. But the final answers would be the same. Okay, so this theta is going to be the same because it's an isosceles triangle. Okay. So now let's break T into its component. This one is going to be the base component or the adjacent component, which is the cos component. In fact, no, 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 sorry, my bad. So if we look at this triangle, we have two components. One is this one, which I'm going to be drawing here instead. Now, this component is the opposite component, opposite to theta. So, this is the sine component. So, it's going to be T sine theta. And this one is the adjacent component. So, it's going to be T cos theta upwards. Similarly, here, this is going to be the sine component. So T sine 30 is theta in this direction. Okay. And that's cos again. So that's going to be another T cos theta. So another T cos theta upwards. Let me clear this 30 from here. Okay. So we have broken down both the tensions into its respective vertical and horizontal component. Uh, we have to find the tension in the string. So I'll have to equate the up component with the down component. Okay. Because the left component and the right component is just canceling each other out. So up component, we have two up components, T cos thetas, and one down component, which is six newtons. So for part one, we're going to do up forces, which is two cos theta plus T, another T cos theta. So T cos theta plus T cos theta equals six newtons. Two T cos theta equals six newtons. Cos theta is 3 by 5 equals 6 newtons. So that gives T is equals to 5 newtons, which is the correct answer. So we found st tension in the string to be five newtons. Next part. Find the frictional and the normal contact 
components of the contact forces acting on B. So you have to find the friction on B and R, the normal contact force on B. Okay, so now let's take a look at B again. So for B, I've pointed a normal contact force pointing upwards, a frictional force acting towards its left, a weight pointing down, but we will also have two components of tensions because of the uh, cord connecting the uh, rod B. Okay. So there's going to be tension in this direction because now we're talking from reference of B. So T is going to be pointing outwards. Okay, so again, this T will have two components. Let's use the same theta. So this would be the opposite component, which is the tan component, sorry, which is the sine component. And then there's going to be a downward component, which is the cos component, but the downward component I'm going to be plotting here. That's the downward component. So that's the left is the sine component T sine 30 and the downward is the cos component T cos 30. Okay, now what do we have to do? We have to find R and we have to find mu R. The frictional uh, force and the normal contact. So R can be found first. R is pointing upwards and the two forces pointing downwards are T cos theta and four. So R will be equals to four plus T cos theta. R is equals to 4 plus T is 5 and cos theta earlier was 3 by 5. So 7 newtons is the normal contact force. Now we need the friction. Okay. For friction, I think we should just use F because they're not asking for uh mu r for now they just they're just asking for friction so instead of mu r we're going to write friction okay so the movement is going to be in left direction as indicated by the direction of the string pulling b so forward force is going to be 40 in fact since it's for now it's on rest it's at rest it's not moving so we're going to use forward force is equals to backward force. Forward force is 40 equals to backward force is friction. And also there's another forward force, which is T sine 30. There were two forward forces, this one and 40. I think 40 forward force, 30, sorry, 40 is the length. There's just one forward force, which is T sine 30. So, and uh, just one backward force, which is friction. So friction will be equals to T sine 30. T is five. Upon sine 30 which gives 2.5. We're still doing part two. We have three, now. Now two is going on. Because in 2, it says find the frictional and the normal component of the contact force acting on B. Frictional component means find friction. 
or normal contact mean uh, normal component means the normal contact force r humne find kar liya 7 newton but friction ka answer is a kuch aur likha hua ma'am why are you using sin 30 instead of sin theta oh yes i don't know why we using that we were supposed to use 4 over 5 30 kahan se maine likh diya फ्रिक्शन फॉर पार्ट टू ओके थैंक यू आल यू part 2 is done we found a uh, normal contact force and friction part 3 says given that the equilibrium is limiting that means now you have to use mu r because only on limiting equilibrium friction is equals to mu r okay so 4 equals to mu is unknown r we had found in the previous part which was 7 so mu comes out to be 4 over 7 which is the correct answer let's do one more question before we start the pure paper any questions here no no okay for the question 5 a ring of mass 4 kg so i'm going to point the weight downwards which is going to be 40 newtons a ring of mass 4 kg is threaded on a fixed rough vertical rod if said rough that means there's going to be friction and if the movement because of the angle the string is making the string is pulling it downwards so the movement of the ring is going to be downwards that means the friction or mu r let's call it friction for now friction which might be equals to mu r is upwards if they mention coefficient of friction in the question then we're going to use mu r and if this asks us to find friction simply then we use friction okay a light string is attached to the ring and is pulled with the force of magnitude t acting at an angle of 60 degree let's also resolve this t newton force okay so it will have a horizontal component which is going to be the sine component because it's opposite to the angle but i'm going to draw it here instead so it's going to be t sine 60 and then there's a vertical component which forms the base or the adjacent of the triangle so it's the cos component so it's going to be t cos 60 t cos 60 okay the ring is in equilibrium that means all forces are um, balancing each other out okay and i did not plot normal contact force has the rod has the string which is being pulled in this direction 
since it's being pulled in this direction, there's going to be a contact here. That means this is the normal contact force. So it should be at the left of the ring because the pull is towards the right. So the contact is going to be towards the left. The normal and the frictional components of the contact force, that means the normal contact force and simply the friction exerted on the ring by the rod are R and F. Respectively, find F and R in terms of T. So let's start with R. R is pointing towards the left and the only force pointing towards the right is T sine 60. So R should be equals to that T sine 60. So now sine 60 is under root 3 by 2. So R is equals to under root 3 by 2. Now we need the friction. Friction is pointing upwards, which would be balanced by the forces acting downwards. So friction or F would be equals to T cos 60 plus 40 newtons. What is cos 60? Half. So friction is equals to half t plus 40. <coughs> okay. The coefficient of friction between the rod and the ring is 0. 0.7. So now you use friction is equals to mu r. Okay. Find the value of t for which the ring is about to slip. Okay, so friction is half t plus 40 mu is 0 0.7 and r is equals to under root 3 upon 2t now you have to rearrange this and make t the subject so that's uh, 0 0.5 t plus 40 equals point seven times square root of three divided by two is uh zero point six zero six two one double seven t that means we can bring zero point five t to the other side subtract them it's very important to take as so, so I was saying that it's very important to take as many decimal values as possible. So minus 0 0.5 t, and then you subtract the two, which gives um, 0 0.606217 minus 0 0.5 gives 0 0.1062177 t. And then you divide this with 40, 40 divided by answer, and we get T equals 376.585 Newtons, which gets rounded to 377 Newtons in three significant figures, which is the correct answer.